last season, my little Honda Civic won the Club TR Class Time Attack Championship. And this year, I'd like to defend that title. So we're going to do a lot of work to my Honda Civic to make sure it stays relevant in the class, all sponsored by Advanced Auto Parts. But before we get into that, let me walk you through what we did last year. Last year, we changed the car's competition class to Club TR. This meant removing a lot of the stock bodywork to put on a wide body front end and some downforce. The initial testing session at VIR netted some very positive results. After we've confirmed the aero was working well, it was time to change the powertrain to fit within the new class rules. Initial dyno testing showed that I had lost 29 horsepower over the course of the season. This is pretty typical as engines age and get worn. It's a good thing that we're going to pull this motor to replace it. The new class requires that the engine internals remain stock, so we had to put in a stock motor. Because of this, we added a few more bolt-ons to the car to help it make a little bit more power to compensate. We also added a Unit 2 Elite baffled oil pan to help with some of the oil starvation around high G corners. I then cleaned up the engine bay and repainted some of it to keep it fresh so I can spot any future potential leaks. We installed the new motor and went a little crazy with some new mods in order to maximize the power of the stock motor. We put in an electric power steering pump from a Volvo C30 in order to reduce the engine's parasitic loss. I also put in a catch can to reduce oil buildup through the intake valves. And I got a cut open and ported RBC intake manifold. With all of these mods and Andy putting in the effort to get this engine really dialed in, we picked up 11 horsepower from the old motor at the end of last season. Lastly, we gave the suspension an overhaul, with K-Tune's new K2 Pro Circuit two-way adjustable coilovers with Swiss springs. After all of this, I went for another testing session at Gingerman Raceway, and I set an all-time personal best. Based on the data that I gathered at testing, I had a larger rear wing made out of carbon fiber by Zebulon. This will create more downforce and less drag than the previous wing. I also had a headlight intake made to hopefully increase some power on the straights. I then took it to its first official event of the year, where I was able to take home the first place trophy. The next event was a little more tricky, as it was filled with a lot of rain. There was only two sessions that were dry, so I pushed the car as hard as I could and found a weakness in my brake system. I was continually boiling the brake fluid, but I still managed to come out on top with a first place trophy again. After two first place wins, it was time to make some more improvements to this car. We fixed the braking system by putting on some larger StopTech C43 competition calipers and thicker rotors to dissipate the heat. I then wrapped my headliner in Alcantara since the old fabric was coming loose. Then we did the biggest visual change of all. Valvoline stepped up to title sponsor the car, so we got the opportunity to give the car a new look. By now I've gotten pretty cocky. I've won two out of the two events that I've been to so far, and my third event was Pike's Peak the event that I had performed my best at in the previous year. So I put my focus on beating Dustin Williams rather than making sure I got first place in my class. And Ryan Seller in his K24 swapped S2000 snuck up and beat me by one tenth of a second. So I took home the second place trophy. Heading into the final event of the season, I was ahead in championship points and on track to take home the victory. Not having made any substantial changes to the car in the last few months though, it looks like my competition had started to catch up. Matt Williams had brought a 280 wheel horsepower RX-7 in the class and edged out ahead of me, and Grant Davidson was right on my heels in his K24 Integra. I took home my second second place trophy, however I edged out in overall season points and took home the championship title. here at Andy's shop where we're going to do a bunch of stuff to this car to make it faster, lighter, and safer, which is important to me because I don't like dying. So we're going to strip this car down to basically the chassis and we're going to put a roll cage in it. We're going to take the engine and trans out, rebuild the engine for reliability reasons, and potentially tighten some of those tolerances to give us a little bit more power. And we're also going to rebuild the transmission, put some gearing in it, uh, maybe try to reduce some of the drivetrain loss with that. Um, all in the name of maybe adding a couple extra horsepower. Welcome back, I am Andy from ASM and we're here to do some stuff on Ben Civic. Currently the Civic, I think, is actually pretty competitive uh, where it's at. I think we're at the point of like getting that last 
95% out of the car. With anything, competition gets more fierce and everyone keeps taking it further and further. So if you just sit back and let the competition catch up, I mean, you're gonna start falling behind. Everything progresses, everyone pushes harder, and um, that's what we're about to do to the Civic, is push a little further and try to keep it at the pointy end of the stick. So the first thing we're gonna do to it, we're gonna wash it, because it is covered in a bunch of road salt. Once we get it cleaned up, uh, we're gonna probably throw it on the dyno and see what kind of power we make. These engines we're using are JDM engines with probably close to 80 to 100,000 miles on. Then we're putting them in a car and we're literally spending 90% of its time near redline. I should say over factory redline. These K24's redlines are only 7,500, I think, from the factory and we're running them to 85. So, I mean, these engines get tired, the, the valve seats get beat up. So just kind of refreshing everything, getting this engine back to brand new, hopefully restore a bit of power that has been lost over the last 100,000 miles of use. For our comparison this time, we're gonna put it on the dyno now, see where we're at, and then it's gonna be a comparison after we kind of go through and refresh everything and, and then see where we're at after all this stuff is done. 225, still pretty healthy. I know I made 250 before, but I'm sure if we kept doing more pulls, I bet we'd see 10, 15 more horse, just getting everything nicely up to temp. So our oil temps are still at 130, almost 140. So we'll do at least three. I usually try to do at least three or four or something. All right, so we just finished up with the dyno. Things look pretty good. I'm 230 horse. A little down from where we were last time. Two things I would blame that on. For one, that was an extensive tuning session when we did last time. We were doing tons of pulls. Oil temps getting nice, operating zone. Each one of these is a pull. Plus, I did have the dyno recalibrated. I think this was after you were here last, so there could be a little bit of variance there. But overall, I think this engine is still a good engine, but I think there might be a little more left there kind of refreshing everything up. So now we're gonna get it off the dyno and we're gonna start stripping some of the interior out. So we're just gonna work on getting the interior stripped, getting it all prepped for Artsum to do some cage work. And then um, hopefully tomorrow we'll, we'll drop the whole drive train out. We have to remove everything in the interior to allow for a new cage to be welded in. Class rules require interior components unless they impede with the location of safety components. And since I plan on running an 8 point cage in this car, we're going to have to remove everything and then see what will fit back once the cage is complete. I'm required to meet a minimum weight in the class anyway, so there's really not any advantage to removing these components, other than to compensate for the added mass of the cage. There's some extra sound insulation under the dash that we'll need to remove to weld the cage onto. And it doesn't hurt that it cuts out some extra weight that I need to compensate for the added weight of the cage. All right, so we've got this box of stuff that we pulled out. This weighs 14 pounds, plus some of this other stuff's not going back in, like the headliners, some of the plastics. Maybe 20 pounds there, the roll bar is 59. So that's roughly 80 pounds removed. And the new cage will be about 100 pounds, so we're still a little, maybe 20 pounds over. And that's not bad, all things considered. We can find 20 pounds, we can figure it out. Hondas are reliable, and uh, honestly, that, what that car has done in the last couple of years has kind of impressed me a bit, even in terms of, I mean, it's got the Honda reliability, but I mean, we're pushing the boundaries of what these parts were designed for. Um, and that car has really hasn't had many issues at all. And hopefully this continues for next season. But like any race cars, uh, I mean, the service interval is a lot more frequent than something like your road going cars where you, you know, changing oil every 5,000 miles and brakes every, you know, what, 10 years. Um, we're going through and wearing these cars out at a much more rapid rate than a street car. So service intervals have to be brought back down to 
much more frequent levels and uh, that's what we're here to do. You know, you, you let this stuff go, that's when you're gonna start having failures at the track. So we try to, you know, preventative maintenance. We're gonna do some crazy stuff to my transmission that should net a little bit faster lap times, but we'll get to that in a future episode. Right now, we'll focus on the engine. It's ran a hard season at above factory redline all last year. Two of my competitors that I know of had head gasket issues late in the season, so I'm going to take apart my engine and make sure that everything gets looked over and refreshed. Start kind of looking for any signs of weird wear on stuff. Uh, we're going to pull the head off. We'll have the head sent into the machine shop and have everything checked over there. We're going to use OEM head gasket, OEM, all OEM parts. Um, everything's going to be done to OEM spec, so it's just going to be literally a, a new engine versus a 100,000 mile old tired engine now. All right, well, that just about wraps it up here at Andy's shop for now. Um, the car is totally stripped out and ready for a roll cage. So now we're gonna load up this empty shell onto our trailer and go up to Minnesota. And we're gonna have Artsum weld up a cage. Uh, my name is Artsum and we're in Elk River, Minnesota. And we are about to put a cage into this Honda Civic. First and foremost, safety. That's the number one reason to put a cage in the car. So the driver gets to walk away in a lot of cases where they wouldn't be able to. A little bit of a side effect is structural rigidity of a car increases as well. For the material we are using inch and three quarter uh, all 95 wall tube DOM. For the process we start with making the main hoop, it's kind of the backbone of the whole process. We put the seat in the car, make sure we know where the driver sits, it's pretty critical to get your clearances right. And then from the main hoop we kind of work back and forward. Uh, we make the A-pillar hoops along the A-pillar and then connect the dots between that from the A-pillars, connect them at the dash level, windshield level, and then all the cross bracing for the main hoop. So it will be four bends, totaling probably 180 degrees from start to finish, and then uh, we start measuring our limits. I use software, I used to do it a little more freehand, but now I'm using Bentec, which you have uh, templates you can put information in, so I will measure out the chassis with height, locations on my bends where I want them to be, and it will give me uh, information on how to bend the tube, and then I use that information to manually bend the tubing in the tube bend. The cage is going to be TIG welded. I will MIG weld plates to the chassis just because of the material and how thin it is. It's a lot easier to MIG weld that portion. And then to those plates, all the tubing gets TIG welded between each other and to the mounting plates. All right, well, as you can see, this is quite a long process. Obviously, you wanna make sure you do it right and you wanna make sure it's fit up as good as you can. And this whole process will take about a month. And Luke and I are not gonna stay here for a month to film this. We've given you a little bit of glimpse into the first stage of getting a cage in there. We've got the main hoop basically all lined up and getting the plates welded in. So now we're gonna leave, then we'll come back and film the final stages of this cage, which is gonna be the final welding with the TIG welder. Uh, so we're gonna leave uh, Artsum to it so that we can stop bothering him and slowing him down. And uh, in a month, or in basically no time for you, you're gonna see this cage complete. Next time on Gears and Gasoline. With a completely upgraded drivetrain built for the Evo, we head to RS Motors to benchmark the Evo's horsepower, and then begin the process of making it a whole lot faster for competition this year. Let's see how much AC stuff it weighs. First up, a new turbo and a whole bunch of exhaust.